Okay, I think we're going to call the meeting to order. We have a quorum. We may have a couple more people joining us, but um, I think, no, maybe not. Yeah, Abdi Wali said, called me and said he wasn't coming. But we do have quorum, so thank you. So, okay, can you be patched in? All right, Paul, you're joining us by phone. Yes, hello there. Thank you very much. Means your cough is not cured yet. That's correct. Okay, all right. Well, um, <coughs> welcome to the November 15th meeting of the Human Relations Commission. I'm Barry Nelson, the chair of the commission. We'll go around for introductions, starting with you, Cheryl, if you would. Cheryl Schaefel, commission member. Dave Lamfer. Uh, Matur Arlier. Mayor Stapp. Tia Brasa, City of Fargo Planning. Kara Glow, City of Par Fargo Planning. Miranda Wolf, City of Fargo Planning. All right, thank you. And you're not joining us, Nicole. Oh, and then, Paul, if you want to introduce yourself by phone. Paul, Paul Jensen, Commission Member. All right, thank you very much. So we have an agenda and we have minutes from our last meeting. I am looking for an approval of both. Move to approve. Second. I've been uh, moved and seconded. Any conversation or discussion about that? Hearing none, all those in favor of the agenda minutes indicate by saying aye. 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 Um, aye. Opposed, same sign. All right. Um, our next item is um, um, I was sad, as I'm sure many of the rest of you were, who uh, knew Keith Bjornsson, who was uh, served with distinction on the Fiargo Human Relations Commission for a number of years, uh, passed away this past week. And um, just wanted to read a statement on, on behalf of that. Um, I personally only served for a short time on the commission alongside of Keith, but it did not take long for me to realize the passion, dedication, and wisdom Keith brought to his role as human rights advocate. His was not a cause as, as, as much as it was about people. Even when Keith left the commission, he continued to prod us to do better as a commission and as a community. Keith was not afraid to speak up for what he believed needed to be done. He is an inspiration to me and I'm sure many who knew him. It would be his legacy that we all continue to make this a better community for people of all abilities. And we had extensive conversation about the kinds of things that continue need to be done. In fact, it was interesting that he communicated with the mayor not long before his death about things that he wished to see happen in this community. So our condolences go out to Keith's wife and partner Sherry and his son Timothy. Uh, visitation is at the Wright Funeral Home in Moorhead, 5 to 7 p.m. tomorrow, Friday. And funeral services is at Atonement Lutheran Fargo, 10.30 a.m. on Saturday and we've heard that the mayor has been requested to speak at the uh, service I believe um, and so I think he's asked a number of us who know Keith um, to share stories for him um, and if any can are able to attend um, please feel free to do so on our behalf and there's also in a comment section through Wright Funeral Home where people can indicate their condolences there so Anybody else wish to have? I, I, we recognize that there are a number of us that have not known Keith as well as others. All right, well, let's move into a funding request. We received one this month from Global Youth United. The information is um, in your packet. Description of the total amount requested. Um, we did talk about this at the executive committee. Um, and I think um, a recommendation as such from us was that we uh, were hoping that maybe a conversation could be uh, precipitated between the um, Global Youth United and the um, Park Board in terms of because one of the major costs there was for the use of a facility uh, which is owned by the uh, Park Board um, and so we're hoping perhaps we could um, 
um, prevail upon the uh, board to perhaps uh, waive that amount so that this practice could take place for, I know it affects a number, uh, quite a number of children in our community. So we had thought that what we could do is pay for, or, or recommend that we pay for the $200 for the transportation that's being requested. So I, I bring that forward for consideration of the full commission. Any questions? Move to approve. All right. Second. Second. All right. Moved and, and seconded to approve $200 for Global Youth United. Any conversation or discussion? Questions? Have we initiated the process of contacting the park board? We talked about maybe going through uh, Commissioner Strand and doing that. Um, and so that would be in, yeah, that would be our intent. Thanks, because that does require action. So hopefully we can be able to report back to the result of that. All right, all those in favor of the motion to approve $200 for Global Youth United indicate by saying aye. 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 Uh, I'm opposed, same sign, motion carried. I'm going to look to staff to ask for an update on strategic planning. It's moving along fairly quickly, and I think you have some updates to provide us. So we sent out the strategic planning RFP for facilitators, and the deadline is tomorrow. So hopefully we will um, get several uh, responses, and we'll be able to move forward with that. Um, I have sent out a doodle to the Human Relations Commission members to, to get ahead of the scheduling so we can get it on people's calendars. Um, so if you could respond to that at your earliest convenience, that would be great just for other people's planning purposes. That's our update. Thanks, Kira. Yeah, I would just reinforce that we're, um, we're moving aggressively ahead with this. We, we uh, recognize that 2019 is bearing down on us. and. We're hoping that we could begin looking at what our priorities for the new year would be. So I think the dates uh, provided by uh, the doodle were in December, so that when... For the um, first meeting, right? Yeah. Um, so if you could respond on that, that would be much appreciated, and then it would help. Sorry. To um, get that information to... Um, are when we look at the, a hopefully a successful facilitator. It went out to, was it about six in the end, five or six perhaps? We had identified that we had sent an RFP out. Do you remember? What was the question? I'm sorry. How many did we send? We sent it out to about maybe. Yeah, five or six. Sounds yeah. right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Questions on that? Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Am I supposed to receive a doodle as well? Because I haven't gotten any. I will resend it to you, Paul. Thank you very much. All right. Um, next item for our agenda is the budget process review. And this was something that we had on the agenda for our last meeting. Um, and um, we, we deferred it for this meeting. Uh, we, we had a, a very informative conversation, our executive committee, with uh, our staff person, Nicole, and she's joining us now. If you wish to give us some information that I think this will particularly be well in informing our strategic planning process if we understand the budgeting process uh, going along with that. So thanks, Nicole. Sure. Yeah, um, we, uh, I received a request and um, in front of you is a lay down item, just kind of a one page that uh, titled city budget and timeline and process. And uh, we hinted at this a little bit at our um, workshop in August and um, I've laid out three kind of categories of how we do our budgeting um, at the city of Fargo one the first category is uh, what I would call general operations and capital and this comes out of what the city calls the general fund and the general fund funds most of our operations and the way that process works a lot of it is established by century code and um, we actually start beginning that process as a department and communicating with our liaison commissioner, so that would be uh, Commissioner Strand in this case, uh, developing our department budget requests. And that's usually about a two to three month conversation. Um, uh, at that point, we have um, each department 
has a one-on-one -on -one meeting with our um, budget committee, and that budget committee usually consists of um, the mayor, or the finance director, and the city administrator, and um, and so that meeting is usually scheduled in early June, and then um, that budget request gets uh, each department makes those requests that gets kind of processed in one kind of overall snapshot that gets presented um, for the first time publicly at uh, the city commission meeting usually in August and then at that point there's deliberation and then hopefully with a, an adoption in September and so that's kind of how that process works over the course of the year and so as soon as January starts really we start having this discussion with our liaison commissioners our you know what are our hopes and dreams as we go into the future um, into 2020 and so it's kind of hard because we're always working out about 18 24 months in advance and so it gets um, again a little hard because we're in, like today doing the day-to-day -day work of decisions that were made maybe a year and a half ago and so um, so that's kind of one category. The second category I want to talk about is our individual committees. And so the Human Relations Commission, along with um, other commissions that we uh, manage at the department, um, we kind of have two processes that we um, talk about in terms of funding. So once we, the planning department, understands what we're going to be allocated for the year to operate, and, um, and it's no real secret, the planning department, since we don't really build things or go and um, construct things or are usually doing a big endeavor which is a new initiative our money stays our money and requests stay fairly stagnant um, year to year you know we might have an initiative like the downtown master plan um, where it's a separate capital expense or construction of a gr parking garage but typically the planning department our budget increases are related to a staff request like maybe we want to increase our staff members or a big study or a big initiative in that regards and, and really we're talking about um, um, kind of a more you know macro increase you know um, and uh, and so our committee operations um, from year to year we kind of roll over that amount of money that same amount of money every year and um, that's when we know what we have to work with as a department and then what we work on with each of the commissions. So the category, that second category, committee operations and capital, um, we like to start talking with our commission and boards um, about this time of year, September through December, as we start thinking about what do we want to do that next year and what are our hopes and dreams as we, you know, what do we hope to accomplish next year and the years beyond? And then um, start to lay out that budget approval process um, uh, ideally with an adoption by December so that's your individual sheet that you see every month um, with your MLK budget and other like inclusion plan that would be like an initiative that would be like that macro level um, and then uh, and then we kind of have that template to guide our decision making and thought process um, in terms of communication of our work throughout the year and um, and a, an important part of understanding the uh, Human Relations Commission is that some of that money comes from the general fund um, of the $15,000 that you work with or $16,000 and then some of that comes from the social service funds and so that category three is the social service funds administered by the community development committee and so the mayor has a category called arts and social service funds you'll see that in the line item budget um, uh, annually uh, and um, it doesn't get usually presented in, a, in the presentation that happens in August at the City Commission because the City Commission's you really just kind of fixated or focused on the general fund and that social service fund is um, uh, roughly uh, 250,000 that stayed fairly um, consistent for as long as I've been here um, for 10 years and um, and uh, the history of that you know talking to Jessica Thomason and and previous administrators the history of that was to kind of show that initiative of um, uh, alliance and um, kind of matching per se of other community development block grant dollars so um, the community development committee administers um, through staff the community development HUD dollars the housing and urban development dollars that gets allocated to the city of Fargo uh, every year and we look to the community development committee to help guide those um, decision-making 
And then um, the social service funds is 250,000 is meant to kind of complement what we can't do at a federal level, but we, what we think is needed at the local level. And, um, and so the way that process works is, um, and we're kind of in it right now for um, 2019 dollars, is uh, the planning department issues an application. Um, that application asks for uh, organizations to submit a idea or goal or program or project in that application. We ask for them to, does that target homelessness or poverty or you know, what community development initiative does that target? And then um, the community development committee, and they just started formalizing this process a little bit more last year where the community development committee allocates a subcommittee and that subcommittee has a kind of a metric uh, scoring sheet, a rubric to, to guide their decision making process. And then um, that money then gets um, uh, kind of decided as part of that subcommittee. It then goes to the community development committee community development ratifies that decision and then it goes to the, C, uh, the city commission. And the goal is to get to that city commission decision by you know, kind of early January at the latest because we know so many of these nonprofits are looking at it for their own budgeting for 2019. And also we try to uh, 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 write those checks and process those checks in the timing of Giving Hearts Day so that that can kind of help with their impact fund um, with the uh, <coughs> Dakota Medical Foundation. Um, so um, this is all to say that as part of that social service funds, $10,000 um, historically has been allocated to the uh, Human Relations Commission as part of that social service fund. So 5,000 from the mayor's gen or from the city's general fund and 10,000 from the social service funds. And, um, and so we started talking at the executive committee the other day if if that request wants to be increased beyond 10,000, it would be probably nice for our liaison commissioner, John Strand, our staff to help bring that message or kind of update an application. I don't think the city actually officially um, writes an application, but we can always do that so that we're equally considered as part of that, that, that mix. And then maybe this is the time to highlight um, the Native American Commission is also funded this way. And this last year, budget year, um, the um, Commissioner Strand brought forward to the Budget Committee um, this idea that instead of it coming from social service funds, having a direct link between general fund and funding the Native American Commission. And so they took their annual budget and now instead of it coming from social service funds, it's coming straight from the general fund. And so uh, we're excited about that change this year. Um, I believe Commissioner Strand felt it was too big to ask for all of our boards and commissions to be um, pulled in that direction, but I, I don't want to speak for Commissioner Strand, but I think that would be a goal moving forward that we try to streamline how that funding works um, because it, it, it seems a little uh, circuitous. Yeah, and so, uh, so I'll be glad to answer any questions. That's kind of a long summary of how our city processes work. It's very simple, Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> Questions. We we did have a long conversation at, at the executive committee, and and in some ways, um, it, it, there were times when we were discussing it, and I felt kind of like the the cart before the horse kind of thing, where we're talking budget when we don't have our strategic plan, and and yet knowing that deadlines bear down on us, and and there's lots of maybe important conversations we need to do in terms of how we function and what we want to do um, as um, appointed by the, the commission and the mayor. So questions from you all on, on Nicole's So Nicole, the difference in the money is general fund money is tax money? Correct. And the other money is federal money? No, I'm sorry. All of the money is tax money. OK. Yeah. I know there were some different parts of your department. Correct. It's federal grant money yeah. that have different strings attached to it. Yeah. So, but all of this, the city of Fargo money, it just depends on how it's. Yeah, it's basically how it's allocated out of the. Out of the big. Yeah. Pot. Yeah, exactly. Is, isn't some CBG money? Isn't some of that money, also federal money? Doesn't that some of that money? Yeah, that's all. CDBG is all federal, right. and so we the social service funds is just. Uh, 
Yeah, we in the past, social service funds and CDBG could be kind of categorized as one sentence or one kind of category, but we're making a concerted effort to separate those. Social service funds is all just local projects, local CDBG is federal okay. and federal funds, and that has its own strings attached. I just want to make sure that I was understanding. Yeah. I knew it used to be all kind of big, big mixing pot. Yes. And it was very confusing. Sometimes I would, we could do it this way or we could do it that way. Right. And this seems way, even though it sounds complicated, it seems way less complicated than some of the ways we used to do it. Yeah. Actually. Our goal is to try to not to mix the two together. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to do that mixing for uh, accounting purposes. Yes. So, Nicole, when you were talking about that uh, and being excited about this uh, general fund being the single source, is that because of it just makes it easier for accounting purposes, or is there any other reason why you're excited about that? I think it's more transparent. And so, for instance, um, it's taking staff, um, that institutional knowledge of knowing how that money gets transitioned between the general fund and to the support work of, uh, like, say, the Native American Commission or the Human Relations Commission, it, I think it just makes it a little bit more front and center. And that's just my personal opinion. And uh, as opposed to this secondary committee that's then deciding the future of this money that gets assigned to the Human Relations Commission. So it's like two steps instead of three steps is kind of what makes it exciting to me and a little bit more transparent so you can follow the accounts. And so really the social service funds could be thought of as a line item in the accounting system. And so um, for simplicity, it does help the city commission because they're not looking at you know every two thousand dollars that's spent they're looking at big categories and so they do kind of build this big big category of social service funds and it's pretty common you know once a year a city commissioner or two will ask what are we doing those social service funds and where are we spending it and um, it'd be a little cleaner in my mind to say oh that's all going back out to the public as regranting or agency support. Instead, we're saying, well, most of it's going out to the public, except some of it's going to, to fund our operations that you've mandated as part of a, a grant, you know, or as part of an ordinance. And so it seems a little complicated, overly complicated. Yeah. But again, just my opinion, not Thank you. Opinion of the commissioner. <laughs> Other questions? Um, now, our strategic planning meeting will take place in December. Mm -hmm. And if we have any requests or changes, that needs to be in very quickly because it will pretty much be decided in January. I think the issue is if we want any more money for 2020. Okay. Because 2019 is already decided. 2019 yeah. is decided. Yeah. I hate to speak for Nicole, but 2019, we already have that money. Yeah, 2019 so. is pretty much um, uh, decided unless there are some increases from social service funds you want to ask for. So that's a good point. I, I think it's, I, but it is really helpful because I think when we, I, my experience has been when we think of an idea, it's kind of like very immediate and like we'd like to do that. And it's like, you know, how do we fit it into the trajectory? If it, it's one thing if we don't have any costs associated, that's fine. but. If we and I don't want the lack of money to limit our thinking either. Correct. So we want to set the goals and then try to figure out what finances are needed and how the time will affect that. But. I'm I'm thinking too that we as a commission may want to look at maybe doing an annual strategic planning mm -hmm. um, and doing it like in September mm -hmm. or so, mm -hmm. so that we have time to put things together before we need to make any requests. Yeah, I think if staff had their um, their druthers, and, it, and you know, this is all part of a city reorganization, so this is, every commission's in the same kind of, kind of evolution, if you will. And um, ideally, the August onboarding meeting that we had with our new um, uh, appointed officials and kind of orientation meeting that would, uh, and we try to put it on the agenda, but we realized we just had too much on the agenda. But ideally, um, that meeting would be um, uh, a little bit of a kickstart into what goals do we want to accomplish next year, and then figure out how to strategically do that with money. 
I think the big question I have maybe moving forward, and this would be for more for our December meeting, but I think there's some opportunities if we find, say, that the MLK Day event budget is a little tight um, and that needs to increase slightly um, for some specific needs. Those would be the kind of discussions we would want to have um, in the next few months um, for 2020's MLK event. Um, and, you know, things like that. As we start to think about your events that you have to have annually, and do those need to be increased in budget? I think the last few years, it seems like we've just kind of carried over the same amount of money, right? And, and then held some aside from the inclusion plan, and um, ideally, you know, kind of moving forward, that the inclusion plan goal, um, you know, that would be a cause to increase our ask, or you know, to add to as opposed to redistribute, um, just. Thinking out loud. Mm -hmm. But going to your question, Cheryl, I guess we talked about this, whether or not there would be, whether or not in this short time frame we have for the deadline, the, a rationale for increasing a request for the social service money. Um, I, mean, I guess personally I'm reluctant to do that. I think it's, you know, it would be feeling more like a, well, we need, we could always use more money kind of a question, request versus here's what we've decided we need it for. Um, and I also am cognizant of the fact that we do compete with other nonprofits for the for the monies, and I, I would like us to have a well reasoned uh, reason for increasing our requests than just wouldn't it be nice? Right, and that's why I was thinking it would be smart to set aside um, an annual or yep. to to schedule an annual strategic planning meeting and do it earlier in the yep. year. So we can keep on top of the time. Yes. All right. Any other questions for Nicole, and or any directives that anybody would like to? They can argue with my rationale, but hearing none, thank you for that. And we will carry this forward in our strategic planning. So use use your notes um, as we move forward on that. All right. Um, MLK update. We have someone that's going to give us. Would you like me to give the update? Would you do that, Kim? Mm -hmm. So at the last meeting, we chose our um, MLK Human Rights Award winners. And the adult award is going to Ellen Molly. Mm -hmm. The youth award is going to Haley Delanuva. I may, I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong, Haley. Um, and the organization award is going to Family Healthcare and NDSU Pharmacy. Um, we, I sent out an RFP for, video, for a videographer um, who's going to do those award videos this year. Um, we're also going to do a RFP for a photographer and a sign language interpreter to be at the event. Um, we talk every year about getting a photographer and we never actually do it, so this year we're going to try and do it. Um, and then we are still working on um, narrowing down our MC and entertainers. That's where we are with that. Great, thank you. Good progress there. Questions for Carol? Suggestion. And you meet, remind me again who's on the committee. Okay. <laughs> Abduwali, Dave. Mature, um, Rachel, Leticia, Leticia is the chair. Hamida was at the last meeting, but I'm not sure that she's, are you, you're not officially on the committee? Is that? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Did I forget anyone, Dave or Mature? Paul. Jared. Jared, yes. Jared Pigeon and Ruth. Ruthie Grimmett, is that how you say her name? And so. Anita. Anita from Reach Partners. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice Thank you. group. Whatever Thank you. Here. I'm here for you. Sarah. Thanks. Thanks, Dave. Good. Thanks for the update. Mm -hmm. Thanks for your work on that. And again, that's coming up in January, third Monday in January, correct? So, all right. Um, Next item then is our attendance policy, and we established a policy at our last meeting, and uh, we have a quorum. So congratulations, commissioners, for 
for showing up for our meeting. That's our, that's our goal, is to be able to do that. And I think another thing is, and it's a reminder to myself, is that but we are prompt in responding to Miranda when she puts out the request for attendance so that we can make sure we're moving forward with, with uh, the, the people we need. Uh, Miranda, how did that work this year? Thank you for doing it early and often. <laughs> um, actually, <laughs> so I sent out the initial email two weeks before the meeting. And within the very um, first week, I only received three out of nine responses. So after a week, I then sent out another um, kind of chasing email to those I hadn't responded from. Um, and once I sent out that chasing email, um, I, then I was able to hear from every member um, after I had to send out that initial or that extra email. Um, there was a few other cancellations that um, happened yet today. Um, that I was not aware of because they were contacted through another staff member rather than um, through myself. I know I was forwarded on the one because um, I had been out of the office ill, um, but the other one I was not aware of. But I did have to send a chasing email. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to just keep kind of drilling down on this um, until we really feel like it's second nature to all of us. And I, I speak for myself because I believe I was the one that needed the chaser um, email to respond. So self-disclosure. Um, but I think our, our goal would not only make sure that we have a quorum, but that we, um, we recognize, again, that people have reasons that they cannot make the meetings. Um, but it's really important that we all respond whether we are planning to make it or not. And then let us let Miranda know. And, and Miranda is the go-to person uh, with our responses to attendance. So um, again, thank you. We're, we'll all get better at this as we go along, right? So I have a question. Those are sent out in, as an Outlook invite, correct? So if I hit I accept, then, I, that's the then you know. If I hit I reject it Fine. or I decline it, that's a no. So th I don't have to send you back an email. You just know that that's what I do, right? Correct. That's what I do. Yes. I, don't send, I don't go, yay, I'm coming. I just accept or, re <laughs> or decline. And that's all I ask. That's what I do. With, that's how I get all my stuff for at meetings. Yep. So, yeah. and that's okay. all I ask out of all. Of okay, my that's why I, I think I, that's what I do. So, yeah. all right. Yes. I just wanted to point out one um, sort of addition that we put in the policy. Um, it's in the second bullet that if we don't have a quorum 24 hours in advance of the meeting, we will um, cancel the meeting. So it can't be like the morning of we have a quorum. We need to know a little bit ahead of time. Right there. Didn't want to be so. Any any sense of needing to review that again? Um, we we did talk about that last uh, month, and again, you know, I think it's a, a policy is only as good as the paper it's written on. Um, so we will. Yes, Tia. Yeah. Um, there is a typo or. A something in the first sentence uh, we, we really want to mac maximize effectiveness we said it twice so we're going to update that and then we'll email it to oh everybody. thank you so <laughs> and then another thing is on the fourth bullet point down we say about the call-ins within two days before the meeting we might not need that much time we're gonna have a little bit of discussion about that because it we might be able to reduce that number for call-ins we were able to pull it off today so we'll, we'll update that as it goes out. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Maybe we wanted to maximize the effectiveness. It's so nice we said it twice. Yep. Kind of thing. All right. Really maximized effectiveness. Really, really. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you for it. That, this is uh, all everyone's uh, part in, in making this move, move um, effectively. Um, moves into staff reports basically that's what Miranda just did that all right was, that was what we were going to talk about thank you eighth there anticipated it excellent thank you very much Are do we have any public comment today in our vast one. public yeah. nothing Vince no thanks for being here um, all right, hearing none, are there any other items for the good of the group? 
Well, I just sent out an email um, like at 11 o'clock today letting folks know that you um, may attend the Human Rights Film Festival. Um, and if anybody wants to attend the North Dakota Human Rights Summit, to please let me know ASAP today so that we can let North Dakota Human Rights um, Coalition know. Because um, we have money set aside to buy those tickets. So and let me know. That's going to be? That's Saturday. Barry, can you? It's Saturday. Um, registration begins at 8 a.m. It's at Lutheran Social Services Office, 3911 um, 8th Avenue 4. South. Oh, yeah, right? I think I know 4. where that is. Yep. <laughs> so, yes, we'd love to have you. This is the part where I, I flip hats uh, a couple times, but uh, we have a, um, a full day of um, activities that day. Um, in the morning, there will be a presentation um, by a panel. Um, that comes that came into the town and initially for the uh, film festival Friday night uh, on missing and murdered indigenous women um, and they're staying over and will present at the uh, summit there'll be uh, arc of justice award winners presented in the morning there is a luncheon um, and then the afternoon is really devoted to uh, working on establishing priorities and, and strategy going forward into the uh, legislative session that um, will be facilitated by a variety of, of individuals. So, and the, the priority areas identified and, and others could come forth from the gathering is um, working on non-discrimination, particularly as it has to do with sexual orientation and gender identity, working on issues around indigenous peoples, and then also on refugee and immigrants. So those would be kind of the three that have already been scheduled. And then the summit would close at four. Hope to see you all there. Mm -hmm. You can put me down. Great. Thanks, Kara. Anything else for the good of the group? If not, let's consider that our meeting adjourned. <laughs>